So this this meeting is Zoom only and recorded, and we are ready to go. So let's do attendance. Uh, Norm here. Mike Coombs here. Oh, Malcolm just came on. That's good. We got a absolutely full house. Um, Malcolm, as soon as he unmutes. Malcolm, you're muted. We can see your lips moving, but nothing. Can, there go. we go. There you go. Okay. Malcolm is here. Yep. Uh, Mike DeBay. Here. Dick Grannell's here. Scotty. Here. Uh, Deb. Here. Eric. Here. Paul. I'm here. Okay. And we have guest Jerry Patria. And that's it for guests right now, until unless somebody else logs in. So we'll start with the minutes. Did everybody have a chance to read the minutes? Yes. Yes. Do we have any comments, changes? Nope. 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 Seeing none, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to accept as written. I make a motion to accept the minutes as written. Normal right. second it. That was Deb, Norm. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous? Let me, I got to go through the <laughs> affirmation. Norm? Aye. Mike Coombs? Aye. Malcolm? Aye. Mike DeBay? Aye. Dick Grannels? Aye. Scotty? Aye. Deb? Aye. Eric? Aye. And Paul? Aye. All right, affirmed. Good. Concom update. Yes. That'd be uh, norm. We have a, a few items here. Uh, the last the last meeting that Concom had was December nineteenth, and uh, there were no major issues on the agenda related to the lake, uh, but we did have a discussion about the LLP form for the for docks and boats. Mm -hmm. And we'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, but since that time, uh, uh, I sent over a bunch of pictures of dock violations uh, to Sabrina in the conservation office. And as you saw in the package, uh, she sent out seven letters to owners that range from 24 Eagle Street, 51 Lakemont, 129 North Lake Avenue, 57 Chestnut Circle, 101 Point Grove Road, and 108 Lakeview. So I haven't had a chance to touch back there to see if they've done the results. I know that 101 has done a lot of work, but uh, they still had uh, the main dock uh, in the water at, at the former Louis B's. Uh, last, okay. last time I checked, but all the others were in. So that it, did, right. it did create some positive action. Hmm. Okay. If you happen to go by, or if anybody happens to go by and can give me a shout or, or let Sabrina know that they are, in fact, all gone or there's still something hanging around. Okay. That would be good. All right. So she can follow up. Okay. okay. Uh, anything else on CONCOM? We're going to talk about the LPP form now, right? Sure, we can do that. Okay. So I'm going to share... Eric uh, found this form in his archives um, that uh, we may have been the one that we approved and it was too late last year. Yeah, I, th I think it is. Okay. So what I have here is the one that Eric found and then I have the one that we did this past year, which happened to be mine. Mm -hmm. and I also have the one that we did the year before, which happened to be mine. Mm -hmm. So in case you wanted to see what the differences yeah. were. Yeah. yeah. Can you but, go back up one? But we need to approve it. If we don't get it done, uh, yeah. if we can't approve what we want tonight, conservation won't have time to approve theirs. Yeah. Okay, and therefore we'll miss the we'll miss the window again. But I think we got enough information here where we can say we'd like one, two, or three. Yeah. Is this the one you wanted to see, Dick? This is the yes. current one. Yeah, yes. I'm 
I'm thinking one or two. Norm, um, can you summarize what the difference is between one and two? So, because trying to look at them on the screen here is pretty tough. Yeah. You only get one at a time. The big, the big owner here, uh, the difference is, uh, oh, we have vessel owner on both of them. Yeah. So okay. I, I think the only difference is that there's more blanks on version one. Okay. Down here. And, in but there's also addresses on right. version two. No, yep. version three has addresses, not version two. Right. Now, now I, I think we I think the one of the things we <laughs> commented about before was having where we have vessel owner that yeah. we include the address Do and we, there's plenty of room to do that. Right, so we, we, we definitely had a lot of discussion about it and had gone around a few times that we can certainly do it. The issue is I'm concerned that it may generate um, unnecessary activity because what happens is that sometimes the vessel owner's registration address is not their lake address, even though they own a place on the lake. Exactly. I'm a little concerned that we'll wind up with, with CONCOM thinking that somebody is asking for a um, the wrong sticker. They're paying the wrong amount and asking for the wrong sticker because they're not a resident, but they are. It's just that they don't register their boat at their lake address. Uh, but if we had the the uh, resident, uh, basically where you live. <laughs> You know, residential address where you live. Yeah, but the, isn't the state law you're supposed to have a registered where it's moored? No, no. Oh. Congamon has an un, a, Congamon has an unusual, very unusual thing because of the cross state thing. Part of the deal is you can have your boat moored on the Massachusetts side of Congamon, but registered in Connecticut. Yeah, but that's only for Connecticut because anything else you have to have it registered where you keep it. So no, I used to have don't. a mat. I used to have a New Hampshire address, and I had to register it here. Yeah, but that you're talking about New Hampshire, but Massachusetts, you have to have a. If you forget about the Connecticut thing, if you have it in, if you have it moored in Massachusetts waters for more than a certain number of days per year, it needs to be registered in Massachusetts. It doesn't need to be registered at the address in Massachusetts where it is, because if it did. Then True. everybody who had their dot their who had their boat at a marina would have to register their boat at the marina, and they don't have a, a mailbox at the marina. True, but so for this for this, that's for this not uh, requirement for this that where you say where the where it is, wouldn't you just put the address, whatever street it is, even though it's well, you want uh, where that you want where they live. So hang on, let let's back up. The point of the the objective here of this section of the form. Thanks, Norm, you got the section up. The objective of adding this was we're trying to prevent people from having hidden marinas. Right. And so the idea is you put the vessel registration number and the vessel owner. And if there's, if there's a bunch of boats that are owned by a bunch of different people, most of whom are not the, the person whose name it is on the application, that would be kind of a flag for us, for excuse me, for CONCOM to be able to go back and ask the applicant, hey, what's the story with this? But Eric, wouldn't you want to know the vessel owner's address? I, I don't, again, you could do it. My only concern is that that may generate activity where CONCOM chases their tails, ask, saying, hey, wait a second, this, this vessel is not registered at the address of the form, and the answer is yes. That's right. It's not doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. Doesn't have to be. Does. Right, and so I'm I'm concerned that that'll wind up being a a red herring, where where that'll generate a bunch of discussion that'll that'll actually um, obfuscate what it is we're trying to what we're trying to um, illuminate. All it does, just, all it does, though, is tell uh, Concom what the block is that it's supposed to be under for whether it's lakefront residents occupied or no, person you know no, no it doesn't tell them that because no? no because you have your boat you you're a lakefront resident but you don't have your boat registered at your lakefront address 
you have to put a, uh, an address on your registration. Yes, so but that address the number, doesn't have the to number be is there. Your that the information isn't. Hang on. That address doesn't have to be your lakefront address. Right. So my boat, is, my boat is registered in my Connecticut house. It's a Connecticut, and I live. Right. I have two houses in Mass. Eric right. hit it right on the head. I've so been. With. I, I, how about I, how about excise tax in Massachusetts? Next thing you know, they'll be chasing like Connecticut yeah. excise so tax. Look, look, hang on, hang on. Let's slow down. The objective of this is one thing. I I I, I want to keep it as narrow as possible. It's to try and make it easier for ConCom to tell if somebody is renting a bunch of spaces. Bingo. So I think, I think the idea, I think we cover it if we just have the registration number and the vessel owner, then that won't automatically be a violation. But if when ConCom gets the form, they're getting, you know, I'll make it up. They're seeing eight, you know, they're seeing eight vessel registrations, seven of which are with owners who aren't the owner of the form, then they'll be that will be a flag for them to go back and ask the owner of the form, hey, what's the story with these seven other boats that are owned by seven other people? You realize you're not allowed to rent spaces, right? So I I think we can get everything we want if we just have vessel registration number and owner, and we won't cause um, a bunch of stuff where where ConCom is chasing people only to waste waste their time, ConCom's time and the other person's time. And in fact, instead of focusing on the people we're trying to stop from from violating this and and creating little mini marinas, they're instead chasing people who who you know aren't violating anything. But doesn't it make it different? more difficult for ConCom to try and, in other words, let's say you get one that's filled in and it's got five different names on it and yeah. and uh, for right. vessel owners. Yep. Uh, ConCom then has to figure out, do they live on the lake somewhere? Yep. No, they don't. No, they don't. No? The, the, no, because it's not that they're sending a violation. Uh, the idea would be ConCom sees this thing and let's say there's five different vessel owners. They go, they they write back to the applicant and say, hey, we see five different vessel owners. You know, do you realize you're not allowed to rent spaces? What's the story with these five vessel owners? And and maybe the owner comes back and says, Oh, well, you know, that's you know, that one's my brother, this one's my son, this one's my daughter, this one's, you know, and, and this one's registered here, but it's really my boat. And they go, oh, Okay, it's fine. Or, or they come back and go, well, yeah, these are five friends of mine. Okay, you're not allowed to rent spaces out to five friends of yours. That, that, would, be, that would be the idea. Not that they try to go and write letters to the vessel owners. They're only writing a letter to the applicant. I, but I think that one comment that I don't like about the, uh, the top one, the first one, yeah. is that it has space for 10, uh, eight. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the second one has only space for, I think, five, if you can go back to that. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm fine with that. I, I, when I made it, I was, you know, I was like, okay, you know, I'll just try and cover it. But, but yeah, you're probably right. Five is probably enough. Yeah. Otherwise, well, we're getting into the mini marina. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me tell you, because I took all those pictures last summer, there's a lots of places to have multiple boats and multiple PWCs on there. Yeah. And, is and, Norm, and, Norm is five enough? I don't think so. I, I, I like the, I like the eight. Okay. Well, so it was 10. We, yeah, when did it change from 10? Them. Well, no, 10, 10 is the, right. I mean, this form had right. eight boxes. There's I eight think boxes. Ten, you're a marina, right? Right. Yeah, I, I think we've got to keep it uh, under 10 because that is a marina then. Yeah. Okay. All right, so, so why don't we do eight? Okay. All right. We, we got a form with eight. Let's do eight. All the right. Other, the other input is to find space here to put an address would be very difficult for Gene. Yeah. Uh, oh, and the writing would have to be so small. Right. Uh, for the people to fill in it out. Right. So I like form one here. All right. I'm 
I'm fine with obviously I said yeah, I am I'm fine with Norm one. <laughs> Norm has the uh, conservation people or like Serena looked at this. They got a opinion one way or the other. Not yet, because because uh, Eric just <laughs> found this today. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't think it much matters. You know, it's whatever you guys are comfortable with. Yeah. Well, we didn't we approve this once before though. Yeah, well, we, we did, did, but, but it never was, got used. It was after the fact. It was too late. Oh, okay, it didn't get rejected by him. It just got right. Didn't get yeah, there. Didn't get used. Okay. We were too late. Yeah. Why don't we just stick with the, the less than ten? That's what the that's what he had mm. been for years. Less than ten. Yeah, yeah, it's just we 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 have a form that's got eight boxes. Let's just use it, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got you. Yeah. I understand. Yeah, and now the one thing that needs to be done, I'm just looking at it on, on that first form. Can you go to the middle of that one, uh, Norm? There's a line missing. See? See where oh, yeah. the right and left side of the boxes were missing the vertical line between vessel yeah. owner and vessel registration. On the on yeah. the first on the first one. First block. Oh, yeah. Right here. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, that needs a line. You, okay. Norm, you have it in Excel, so that's fixable. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Thanks. Yep. So we'll give that. To, you know, the next ConCon meeting is Monday, so they'll hopefully. Uh, I think it's Tuesday. That. I think I got a thing tonight that says it's Tuesday the seventeenth. Oh, is it ah. the seventh? Uh, yeah. Tuesday. Okay. Because we didn't have one on Monday, so they rescheduled. Right. It. Right. Okay. All right, so that's our. Do we need to vote on that or just send it in? I would just send it in. Yeah, is everybody, anybody have any stones with it? Yeah. No, All send right, it so in. Let's just do it. Norm's there. Norm, that's the one we decided on. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Jerry's okay. there too. Yeah, it works for me. Yep. Okay. Okay. Works good. Okay, let's move on. Um, so the next thing is uh, is another norm MSPC update. Yes, right with you. And Norm's going to summarize it like he did the last one uh, for the minutes, because otherwise I've got a between uh, Karen and myself we have to <laughs> scribble real fast. <laughs> yeah. So I'll do that. Uh, actually, I'm, I prepared this one for ConCom for this past Monday, but we got canceled. Uh, so it's a couple more questions. These are not particularly related to the lake. So we'll kind of go through them kind of quickly. Yeah. Uh, but you'll get a gist of uh, question 11. Let's see if I can get rid of this. Hang on. And let's go up one. Uh, question 11 was uh, talking about I gotta move this to uh, development that went on residential and business, industrial, office and agriculture, and what your what, what should be encouraged and what should not be encouraged. Okay, so the number one vote for all of them was agriculture. Encourage agriculture. Uh, encourage business development residential development, office, and industrial. And as you see, it goes down pretty fast. Okay, and now we'll break one of the, each of these down just a little bit to give you a flavor of, of uh, what their inputs were under agriculture, what's wrong direction. Uh, so the second part of the question was the write-in, okay? And this is the this is the write-in portion. Agriculture still had 422, business development 421. Wow. Okay, and then when you break down agriculture, the top 12 was farming with 73, uh, and the red is, is uh, encourage and, and orange is discourage. So okay. we got uh, sustainable farms a second, cannabis farms, all your greenhouses and so on down the line, okay? And then the top 11 business responses uh, keep it small, keep it a diverse restaurant, retail, independent, and high tech, and so on down the line. Hmm. Then you look at residential. Uh, 
Single family homes was the most affordable was second, followed by condos, and then it gets pretty small. And you can see uh, not much for apartments down here. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, offices, the number one was make it a medical office, professional office of any kind, and then they get pretty small pretty fast. Uh, industrial, keep it small, keep it light, keep it high tech, and keep it manufacturing, keep it clean, then it gets pretty small. Okay, question 12, do you support uh, these strategies for future growth over the next 20 years? And the number one was educate landowners on protecting land with 777. Hmm. Next was additional zoning to protect agriculture, followed by balanced development with water supply, which I love. Acquire land for wildlife preservation. Acquire land for to restore wildlife habitats. Acquire land for passive and active recreation. And acquire land for recreation. And you can see on the other end, uh, zoning for higher density housing was, uh, they opposed that. Expand zoning for business and, and industrial, uh, they oppose that. Hmm. Okay. So now we got the right in, uh, the other right in, uh, open space for 15, farming for 13. So they get pretty small pretty fast. And other, this is a continuation, so it gets even smaller. So <laughs> no need to discuss that one. And those are the two that I wanted to discuss tonight. I didn't want to take a lot of time, uh, but I wanted to give you a flavor of what the, what it said. And next meeting, if you still want them, I'll give you a couple more. I think personally, I think it's good information. You know, I, I like it because it's a summary. Um, we get the flavor of what's going on in the MSPC. <clears throat> it doesn't, doesn't take long to go through, you know, five or six, ten slides. Yep. So I'll plan on continuing. Good. Everybody else Good. like that? Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Good. Good info. Yeah. yeah. Good. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda, let me flip a page here. Uh, CRC update. I guess that would be you, Deb. It would be. Yes. Jennifer. <laughs> yeah. I got to get that changed. Um, there, there really isn't anything new. We'll have a, a board meeting next month. Uh, there are still inquiries from our members about the new lighted buoys. So, um, Dick, when you have a chance, if you can give us an update on that. Well, I'll give you, I'll do you a quick one right now, uh, okay. is that we bought, we have actually changed buoy companies. Uh, and I'll tell you why. The the one, Rolian, that we've been dealing with all these many years, and we've had quite, as you well know, uh, when they get hit, they literally fly apart. Um, there's another company that they make them with what's called roto molding. So it's a one piece construction mm -hmm. and it's got thicker walls than the Rolian. What's strange or what's very interesting, uh, Rolian's price came in double what it was last year because we've been buying buoys from them every year. So in actually it was in eight months, it, the price has doubled. So I sent back to them, I said, is this correct? And they said, well, yeah, we had a price increase and blah, 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 blah. So <laughs> at the same time, I've been looking at this other company. I had all their data. I went out to the two companies that make the buoys, the 1428 series buoys that we use. And they came in at less than what we paid last year to roll in. And, and uh, the process that they use is so much more efficient because it doesn't involve all this assembly after the fact. So we bought four of their buoys that we needed, the four that we had to replace of the other ones that fell apart. And what I wanted to talk about, and we can do it quickly now, uh, is that uh, we we used up? It was that the, the uh, town gave us twenty two hundred dollars. Remember, we got zero 
for the one year during COVID, we got essentially zero the next year. And so now we're playing catch up pool. So I think we should go back. It's the right time to do it and request a transfer of the same amount of $2,200 so that we can buy the other buoys that are basically our garbage. You know, we're, otherwise we're going to be putting out ones that if anybody looks at them cross-eyed, they're going to fall apart. And that would be my recommendation. So uh, what it entails, I have to fill out a piece of paper and then um, we have to get the signatures of you people, which I can put it in the, in the bucket out there. But if you concur, I will, I will fill out that piece of paper, notify everybody that's sitting in the cauldron and we just have to come by and sign it. Okay, and we, well, just, this, we have to get a majority of signatures, you know, just five signatures. Does this affect um, the lighted buoys at all? I mean, it will make actually make it uh, easier. The, the way they mount on theirs is simpler. And the, the transition piece that would be used for theirs will be easier to make. A lot easier. Good. So are we back to the drawing board then on? No, no. Uh, I, I probably can make it so that the transition piece will fit either. Um, but I, I have not had time to do that. I just ordered the buoys. They were delivered. So the, the buoys are physically here. They look really, really good. Let me tell you. Um, so, and, and also I must say is that their ice bars, you know how we have the problem, you guys have all seen it, where the ice bar gets hit and then it sinks because the bottom of it has the weight in it and the rest of it, um, and, and if you knock it off, it just shatters because it's it can't take a hit. And the, the ones that th this company makes, same price, they're, they're three feet long and much more durable. Again, they're roto molded. They're not uh, pieces put together. So, well, Murph is sideways. <laughs> so, you know, I think we, we will do better with um, this company. And, and uh, oh, the other good thing about it, too, the cost of transport from the, the uh, Rolian that we normally would use is almost twice what it costs because the other company is in New Hampshire. And they come by truck anyway. So we're only paying from New Hampshire to here rather than Wisconsin to here. So it's a price buoy when we buy them from Wisconsin now. So what do, what do you need from us? To, huh? to, what do you need from us? A motion or to get the twenty two hundred? Let's do a motion that that we seek it. All right, then it's so we'll motion to seek um, twenty two hundred dollars in uh, reserve transfer. It's called. I'll, I'll make that motion, Dick. All right. So that's motion is Mike. Mike Coon. Yeah. I'll second, second it. I'll second it. I'll second it. Scotty second it. Is that yep. what fine? Yeah. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous? Let me go down the roll call. Oh, just set that piece down. Okay. Norm? Aye. Mike Coombs? Aye. Malcolm. Aye. Mike DeBay. Aye. Dick. Aye. Scotty. Aye. Deb. Aye. Eric. Aye. Paul. Aye. All right. Confirmed. Unanimous. Okay. We're hey. done with that. Hey, Dick. Yeah. Um, is there any way these guys make lighted buoys that we could utilize? Yes, so they do. Well. And I'm looking at, I've got prices from them also on the lights. Okay. Yeah, because remember, CRC is willing to put money in. So yeah, yeah, we, I got it. We're really shooting for this boating season. Yeah, yeah. is so. it possible? Hmm? You think Say we'll again. have it? You think we'll have it for this voting season? Uh, this boating season? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
I'm writing that down. It's not, it's not, uh, it's right now. It's not <laughs> a number one that. priority. We got to get ready for the budget. <laughs> so, all right. Um, next thing. Uh, let's see. Send the letters. You already hit that. Uh, Norm, you, you took care of that whole part with the letters being sent. And I did, there is one across diagonally across and I've got the address of it. That's still in the water. Uh, diagonally across from me. And mm. So I was asked to find out what the address was, and I figured it out today. So um, let's see, Concom. Oh, one other thing on on LPP, uh, Chapter ninety one LPP issues, one twenty nine North Lake Ave. That was never resolved. That's with DEP and conservation because. That's the one with the three permanent structures that cannot be permitted under LPP. They can't be uh, given chapter, they were denied chapter 91 license mm -hmm. because they far exceed, far, far exceed 600 square feet. Was that that part? Which one was that? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yep, that, those are them, you know, they're- They're about 1800 plus square feet. Right, and they're, and they're put in with driven piles. Oh, right. I remember. So it's, okay. You know, this is a- 10 years. So I think we need to we need to revisit that norm with um, conservation and, and an input to DEP from conservation because conservation can't enforce, um, they can enforce LPP, but they can't enforce chapter 91. They can advise, they can turn them into DEP. That's how that works. So if we can get that on the radar of, of uh, Concom that will help, and we can send a letter, which we did before to DEP, reminding them that they it's the ball is still in their court because that was sent to Chrissy Hops in Boston as one of the issues that's been outstanding for years, and she said she would take care of that once she got out from under some of the big Chapter ninety one issues she's wrestling with right now. So. I think we have to hit it both ways from conservation and, and we'll, I'll stay on top of uh, DEP from us if that's how you want to do it. Okay. So um, I guess what we should do is have a motion for, for LMC to send a letter again, an email to DEP reminding them that that ball is still in their court. Yes, no? Sure. Yeah. Yep. All right, I'll entertain such a motion. Somebody? Don't move. Norm. Who was that? Norm. Norm, okay. And a second? Somebody? I'll second it, Dick. Mike DeBay. Mike D, okay. Make a, to send a letter or an email to Chrissy. DEP. Yeah, yep. and I'll copy CONCOM. Yep. Okay, and and uh, so vote. police chief, yeah, and police chief, yeah, got it. All right, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous? Okay, roll call. Norm. <laughs> Aye. Mike Coombs. Aye. Malcolm. Aye. Mike DeBay. Aye. Dick, aye. Scotty. Aye. Deb. Aye. Eric. Aye. Paul. Aye. Unanimous. Affirmed. All right. We can move right on. Was Deb finished? Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, Deb, I, I, I got a guarantee, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if they come with lights and you can buy them that way, buy them that way. Yeah, buy yeah. make it simple. Well, the, you buy the lights, actually, are a separate part number. You don't buy... Uh, a buoy with a light. You buy a buoy and you buy a light. It's just the way they are. All everybody sells them the same way. Okay, so this company doesn't make the buoys with lights. Nobody makes buoys with lights because lights are all different. It's you put on. In other words, you can get one mile lights, two mile lights, white lights, red lights, green lights, flashing lights, steady. <laughs> there, you you spec out what you want for a light. But they okay. sell them. 
but they sell them the same place. They sell them. They both sell them. Yes. They both sell them. So they sell them. And the prices are comparable. Okay. Okay. Make it it so, Captain. Okay. (laughs) All right. 141 Congamon Road, uh, sheets 28, 29, and 30. Yep. Uh, there's still no resolution, and that's what this relates to, uh, an email that's been out, uh, and there's no resolution on the uh, sewer pumps that take the effluent from the lower level restrooms. Where does it go? Nobody knows because they couldn't conduct a, a, a dye test because the pumps weren't working. So they put the dye in and it just sat there. So we have no idea. There used to be a cesspool uh, and we have that drawing and that input came from the former owner. Uh, the, it was the uh, Cody's owned that. And so I spoke with Tryon Cody and it was Ovid Cody and I forget his father's name, but anyway, uh, that owned that, built that place. And it was a cesspool that was used for the restrooms that were downstairs. And that is in a, in the last uh, meeting, I, you got copies of the photos that were showed where it was. We have no um, documentation that that was ever removed and that those are connected now to the uh, sanit- to su- town sewer system. The only way we can verify that is with a dye check. And we have to wait till they fix the pumps, which are not working, and then put flush uh, dye down the toilets. And then we have another problem <coughs> that crept in is that there is a sump pump down in that same level. That sump pump, we don't know where it discharges. It is not allowed to be discharged into the town sewer or the town stormwater, they would have to put it into a dry well on property. So that has to be checked with dye to find out where it comes out. What a mess. Uh, you know, it's it's kind of a mess. It's in uh, a 55, it's probably in a 55 gallon drum with trap rock in it. Yep, yeah, that's exactly yeah. what it is. That's you know, how they all used to do it. Yeah. <clears throat> Which if it's on his property, that's fine. You know. Mm-hmm. Um now there's a, a new issue crept in this week is that they have installed a four foot fence. Uh, the drawing that was approved by, cause it says on it, on, on I have both drawings. One is June and one was back, uh, whatever the hell it was. I don't know. Uh, at any rate, the earlier one that was approved by everybody had a three foot fence, stockade front fence on Beach Road. It was installed as a four foot fence. There's a later drawing that was not approved. I went to planning board, the planner. No, I went to, and, and it says subject to town, uh, town approval. I talked to select board. They did not approve it. Talked to the chief. He did not approve it because it's now a line of sight issue. It's blocking when you come out of Beach Road, you can't see. <laughs> And if you come out of the drive out of the driveway from the facility, you can't see. So that's a that's a problem. And I uh, today, Russ Fox and I spoke with the chief at a there was a luncheon for the uh, what it call it's the uh, dispatchers that were leaving. And so we got a chance to all talk about it. So the chief is going to follow up with his uh, safety officer and go look at it. And Russ is gonna follow up and check, but he knew of nothing that was approved by a select board. Hmm. In fact, he says he had never seen it. <laughs> so, um, <coughs> excuse question, me. Question, Dick. Yeah. Is, um, I had heard that uh, Mr. <coughs> White, the head of that Board of Health had left, is that true? Uh, he's not head of the Board of Health, he's our health agent, he left. Okay. And we have a new one that is from Westfield, who was a health agent, I think assistant or something like that. He starts February 1st. Mm-hmm. Tom, uh, <coughs> <Bless you. coughs> excuse me, Tom uh, Fitzgerald has been filling in and will stay, you know, basically <laughs> he's almost full time right now. 
until the new person starts and he's going to stay there and help them get acclimated. Okay. And hopefully become aware of what's going on, what's, what's right. supposed to be going on at Krabby's. Yeah. And I copied uh, Tom on, on all of that stuff. So um, he's, he's up to speed. Plus we've had one-on-one -on -one discussions. Um, Tom, the building inspector slash code enforcement officer and myself okay. and, and uh, Sabrina. So we've had everybody involved. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Um, anybody have any more questions on 141? No? No. Okay, we can move along. Some good news. The next one is sheets 31 and 32. That's Canal and Great Brook uh, dredging. And NRCS uh, has signed a contract with a consultant. <coughs> And, the cons and we're having the actual kickoff meeting on the 18th. And uh, Eric has said he would like to join us, which is good. We'll have the chair, vice chair. We'll have the people from, from the consultant and the NRCS person. And this gets the, what this does is they will do the assessment of both Brooks and, and scope what has to be done, how far, in other words, and I've already I've said, looking at it on maps, and we drive it all the time, I don't think any of us would argue that Canal Brook is probably a two and a half mile job, and Great Brook is probably four to five miles of, of Great Brook that has to be addressed. So that's what they will do. They will go as far as it ha they have to go till they know that they can get rid of the water. And, and uh, that's all federal funded. Not a nickel from the town. So that's, mm -hmm. I think that's really, really good news. Yeah, yeah that would be yeah. great. Right next to that, because we always ask the same question. Well, what about all the goo that's in the bottom of, of the, uh, the uh, coves in Congamon? And I got a nice input from uh, John Velas's office. John no longer represents us. We're represented by... Um, uh, a senator now who was a representative, he's now Mark. a senator from Pittsburgh. Yeah, Paul Mark. Right. And he's we had him Pittsburgh. at our meeting last night. And that's not the best thing in the world because it's, you know, the other end of the basically uh, an hour's drive away. And John okay. was here all the time. Okay. Um, Senator Mark spoke at our meeting last night, the Democratic meeting. Yeah. He is going to have office hours here. He'll be here once a month at least because he's got ah. all the towns to take care of. Um, he is, gave us his email, which I'll put up on the Democratic site. Um, he is very knowledgeable and uh, he is very interested in what we can do because I asked that particular question of him for the lakes. He said, tell me what you want. You know, so I said that I would uh, set up a meeting with Dick if he was available. Yes, and we need to do that as kind of ASAP. Okay. What was that? <laughs> ASAP. As soon as possible. It wasn't, it wasn't four letter word. <laughs> so, okay, Dick. So I'll, I'll set that up. Okay. So I think we got some really good news as to progress on getting the lake addressing flood conditions and the goo oh and i actually so part of this is um which is going to come up is bathymetric maps and we'll talk about it when we get down there yeah. okay yeah. but it relates very strongly to what i just told you about um with the dredging of the coves okay um so the next thing that we need to do is the lake management annual report that everybody has a copy of which I hope you read. Um, I have not yet. And I don't know if anybody has any comments. Um, <laughs> you, you got know, mine already. I got them and I made the changes. And I, anything I got, I made the changes already. So if, <clears> you know, uh, I think we've scrubbed it pretty well. I appreciate the that people read it <laughs> um, and, and duly commented. So unless there's any other issues on it, I'd really like to take a vote because we've got to turn it in. I know they're going to be asking for it uh, in the next week. 
and we won't meet until February. So that's too late. So, you know, if we take it and Eric, if you find some something uh, or if anybody else finds something that's incidental, you know, like a word is missing a, a letter or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I think we can accommodate that. So the, the intent is, are we satisfied with the basic content of the report? And if so, I'll entertain a motion that we ship it out subject to minor tweaks that somebody finds, you know, where I missed a, a, a comma or a, you know, miss, a chat did spell check on it, but it can I'll, I'll make that motion, Dick. Go ahead. I'll make the motion, Dick, for what you're asking. Okay. okay. Mike Coombs. And second? Mike DeBay. Second. Yeah. All right. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Abstain? <clears throat> Unanimous. All right. I'll go down. Norm. Aye. Mike Coombs. Aye. Malcolm. Aye. Mike DeBay. Aye. Dick. Aye. Scotty. Aye. Deb. Aye. Eric. Aye. Paul. <coughs> Aye. Unanimous. Okay. Affirmed. Okay. Moving along. We're moving. <laughs> Killing it. All right. The next thing. LMC elections. Time to do that. Uh, we need a chair and a vice chair. We got them. <laughs> Agreed. Well, I need a motion then. <laughs> I'll make anybody... a motion. Let's leave it as is. How's that? And that was... Who, who, made, who made that motion? Malcolm. 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 All right. Second? I'll second. And that's... Uh, Paul Murphy. Paul. All right. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous. Okay, I got to run the norm. Yeah, Aye. Just a, a Mike quick, Coombs. Aye. Sorry, oh, Go somebody ahead. talking Go ahead, here. Eric. Quick, Eric. quick question. Um, yeah. Just, it's silly, but it, we probably have to do it as two different votes. One for you that you abstain from, and one from me that I abstain from, right? Oh, good point. Okay. So, you know, so, so probably, so, you know, all right. So, so we'll do a vote. One is for chair. All right. Let's do the one for chair. All right. And, and so let's, I that. need a motion. I'll make the motion for chair for Dick Grinnells. Okay. And a second. I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? All right, yeah, let's do the other one and then I'll run down because I think the vote is, you know, will. Yeah. Uh, a motion for vice chair is I'll for make the motion. Eric. Yeah. I'll, I'll second it. All right, so that, who made the motion? I Malcolm. did, Malcolm. Malcolm. And who seconded? Scotty. Scotty. And all, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? I abstain. All right. So there's one abstention is for, for Eric is Eric. And for me is Dick. Okay. So let's go down and vote. So we have Norm. Aye. Mike Coombs. Aye. Malcolm. Aye. Mike DeBay. Aye. Dick minus uh, for... for uh, Eric, but not for myself. And Scotty. Aye. Uh, Deb. Aye. Eric. Aye. He's for, aye from, all right, he was aye for, for me, but not for, for myself. Yeah. And uh, Paul. Aye. Affirmed. Okay, we're done with that one. Okay, status quo. Um, <clears throat> let's see, ramp. Attendant attendee at ramp attendance <laughs> pay rate for calendar year 2023. Uh, you have that in front of you on page 35 and 36. And it basically the uh, one of the things I did was I added in the mass min minimum uh, wage numbers 
from the past. And so you can see, you know, what we've done these years. We've always stayed up from the minimum wage. We haven't had just, you know, uh, bare bones minimum wage. <clears throat> and I personally, I would recommend, and, and you guys can chew it out, chew on it, but I'd recommend that we have $16 an hour, a buck an hour over the min wage so we can attract people. We can afford it. Um, you know, we've had some really good people and we want to keep them. And so anybody have any comments on that? Would uh, that affect anything where uh, people that are older who get a tax break, would that increase their tax break or? It does, uh, the amount that they get in the course of a year doesn't, doesn't impact them. We're still trying to get tax work off people. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> which all it is, that's the real estate tax that they work off. And they work it off at the rate that they would be paid as a, um, as a ramp attendant per that's, hour. Yeah, that's what I was asking. If it yeah. Okay, it would yes, it would. Yes, it would yes, reduce yes. the number of hours, but we've actually wound up hiring <laughs> um, one that, that worked for us doing that, came back and is basically almost full time. And she's there all the time, right, Karen? Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's coming back. Okay, good. Yeah, if we can give them a little more money too, that's great. Yeah. yeah. A little so, more rebate. So I'm, in, I'm in favor. I'll, I'll make the motion. Okay. I'll second it. Deb, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody? Any, any? Yeah. Opposed? <laughs> Silent. Abstain. Okay, and I'll run down the, all right, um, let's go down the names. Norm. Aye. Mike Coombs. Aye. Uh, Malcolm. Aye. Mike DeBay. Aye. Dick. Aye. Karen, oh, uh, not Karen, Scotty. Aye. Uh, Deb. Aye. Eric. Aye. Paul Murphy. Aye. All right, affirmed. Good enough. Next on the hit parade, moving right along. Um, uh, buoy bands and wrappers. You've got pictures. I sent them to you in color and in, in uh, black and white. <clears throat> and we have to replace them because they're the ones that are on there are, are really, really old. I don't even, they, they're still whole, which is what's incredible. Um, but they're very faded. And I, Personally, I'd like to see us go with a brighter one. The ones that are on there now are, are kind of a dull, um, bit orangey-ish. Uh, they don't they don't pop. You know, like we have the signs down at the ramps now that there are red, yellow, and black and white, and they you know they really catch your eye. And so, what you've got in front of you in the color version, I think, is I think we should go with something like that. And it's the same price, by the way. I already verified that. You have the price of them there. So if everybody likes it, um, that's what we'll go with. Hey, hey, Dick, this is Mike Coombs. Are the yeah. new ones going to require the stickers also, or do they come with colors? The, you mean the bands that go on the top? Yeah. Those You'd only go, on those only, ones? yeah, those only, they come in colors. And they only okay. go in the... Uh, uh, channels, okay. you know, to, to yeah. and and by the by the uh, launch areas, but it's um, it's it's a, applicable only to the channels. So, okay. do you want to see a different color than black and and yellow? No, 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 they're fine. They look great. Okay. All right. So, um, I don't think we have to vote on that. We just go out and do it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Colors as per um, sent photos. Okay, got it. All right, so we'll order those. And that gets, um, we're, we've got plenty to, to pay for those. Bathymetric mapping, pages 40 through 46. This relates to the goo in the bottom of the lake more than anything. Um, one of the things, I forget who, was it you, Eric, or who? Somebody said that the bathymetric maps that we have, that the state has, 
really isn't worth the paper it's printed on. Well, the, well, that, it, it, yeah, that wasn't quite what I said. But uh, what I said <laughs> was that a number of years ago, when I had that student doing the project, and yeah. she did measurements at you know, like 72 locations around the lakes, uh, while she was doing those measurements, she was also uh, measuring depth. Uh, because while she's there doing the profile, we also want to be the total depth. And when I compared those with the bathymetric maps, they were off by a noticeable amount. And actually, when I gave that data to Ken, he wound up recalculating a few of our other things like oxygen demand and what happened. Ah, okay. he said, actually, he said, the, he said it turns out that the bathymetric data that, that the state has is a bit off. <laughs> so, okay. I, I mean, it wasn't horrendous, but it was enough. It was off by enough that he said, yeah, it's worth recalculating. All right. So, so. I what, what this is about is we, <clears throat> my feelings are, this personal feelings, we should seek some town funds. This is a little bit of you invest something to get a lot um, to get better bathymetric mapping. And we would get mapping. And I've contacted now four companies so far who have the capability to give us the depth to the top of the goo and the depth of the goo. Yeah. So that, that is would be really good. Right. And that is so important if we're going to dredge anything. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. I mean, I would, that's data I would love to see. I think a number of us would love to see that. You know, there are coves that we're talking about going after, and that would help us to prioritize the coves also. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. How much so, is involved? So, what we're I gave you kind of a worst case in, in what we got from uh, the price that we got from uh, solitude. Yeah. So if if nothing else, if it turns out that we go with solitude, that's how much we'd be seeking to have the muck and the the to the top of the muck and the bottom of the muck uh, map, mapped. Mm -hmm. And I think we can do a lot better because the company, as you see in the letter that came, or email that came from them, that company is from out in the Midwest. And there are, so far I've found three of them that are right here. One right in adjacent in, in uh, Albany, uh, two in Eastern Mass. And I, I keep going down who's got the equipment. And it's very automated now, by the way. They actually have... Uh, they do them both manned and unmanned. And they the, the boats, uh, the type uh, detection equipment that they have today sends out two frequencies. The higher mm -hmm. frequency, and I had a long discussion with the gentleman about it. The high frequency tells you to the um, bottom of the muck. The low frequency tells you to the top of the muck. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you get it at the same time. You don't have to make yeah. multiple passes. <clears throat> So that's what we would seek is is a company that can give us both because that will help us get federal funding. And as I said, I've got access now to uh, some really good hints to Heloise who to who who to go to to get federal funding for that those projects because we're looking at probably a total of about six million dollars to do all the coves in, in two million dollar chunks. So, yeah, you know, not a small chunk of change. Hey, hey, Dick, this is Mike Coombs. I, I have a question for Eric. How, how would that affect the alum treatment we've done if we disturb the bottom? The, um, the areas we're talking about are where we really didn't do much of an alum treatment because the alum yep. was for the deep. Uh, okay. the, the alum treatment doesn't, is not effective in shallow areas, so we didn't, we didn't treat in shallow areas. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yep. That's a very good question. Very yeah, it is. Question. So the, yeah. the, the, this focus is in the uh, is in the littoral areas, you know. So the coves, um, the the coves where it's shallow, um, and a lot of that shallow is is muck. Um, and, and that's yeah. precisely what, why we want to do the coves because yeah. you can't treat them treat them without right. right. And so they're a Okay. You know, they're a continual source of issue for us. Um, you know, we, we've overpowered that with the alum treatment, but it's still there and it's still contributing to our background algae and other, and other issues. 
Uh, and of course, you know, for the for the property owners there, you, you know, the uh, you know the the mucky bottom is uh, is you know not that popular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, correct. And, That's a and nice we, nicely okay. put. <laughs> you know, where we've done the corings, you know, basically under the muck is a nice sand or in some places yeah. gravel, but mostly a sand yeah. bottom. Right. right. Okay, thank you. you. Know, so all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we take that stuff out, and every cove we do it in, those homeowners now have sandy bottom. Yep, and it's much better for the health of the lake. Yep. Much, much better. Yep. Okay. And so the the next one was the E. coli testing <clears throat> and notification. Uh, I actually I I spoke with Doug Moglin again today, reminded him about it. And anybody, if you're talking to him, please feel free to remind him because he's got the R the responsibility for the select board to set this up. And I have not had a, a date proposed. I don't know if anybody else has. No, and I've talked to him too, and he goes, oh, I'm working on it. Yeah. I, I think the most valuable thing to get, which is which is also the the lowest cost initially, would just be the the approval that when when not if when there is a detection that is above the allowed level that a repeat test can be done which is the dna test to determine you know what critter is the source of this e coli yeah right, we've also got to decide you know how much testing we're going to do and who's responsible yeah so. but it, but the 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 um my point there is that what i'm suggesting there you don't need a bunch of new people to be responsible in other words test where you're testing now and if you test high test to find out what what it is, is what critter is the source right animal vegetable or mineral currently we're only testing at the town beach right unless I, I am, I, I understand. Yes, I'm. I'm saying we can get approval for that. That would that would be very helpful. In you know, I've had discussions with our limnologist about this, and it's kind of what I had said before. Um, you can spend a lot of money doing a lot of testing, and it isn't right, going right. to guarantee you anything. You know, it, it, you know. So I mean, if we like, you know, we can we can spend money. You know, having tests done at 50 or 100 or 250 locations come around on, the lake, you know, it, you know, at some point it's just, you yeah, know. Yeah, so I understand that. It's just that homeowners, one, they want to be notified. They want to know yep. where the testing is. So it's, it's not just what, you know. But that one, one, the place. one thing. People, it's peace of mind. But, but the one thing that you, just like the ice, we cannot say that it's if it case. tests, in spot A, that it's good in spot B. Right. right. We'll make that clear. Cannot do that. There, mm -hmm. may, there needs to be more than one test in one spot. Yeah, but it's not Eric, I have a question the, for you. Yeah. If they if they run a sample and they go run a test and it ends up being high, can't they use that same sample at the lab and check for the deep to see where it came from? Yeah, probably not. Because uh, they usually, when they the lab does the test, they usually use up the sample that you gave them. So they probably would want another sample. Um, I don't know for sure. In other words, we could go back to the lab and ask them, hey, how do you want to handle this? Yeah, so yeah. We, we we haven't worked this out. Um no. my guess is my guess is that you do you'd want to do that, but you'd want another sample, but maybe not. And and maybe a couple, you know, maybe as we put this together in a protocol, maybe there's a couple of times per year where we measure in four places instead of one, for example. Yeah. Yeah, and this, like, and that's why we need those meetings because yeah. right. we can't solve it. Yeah, yeah, right, right. But, okay. I, but you know, you you know, you can imagine, you know, it wouldn't look. Town Beach is an obvious place. Babs Beach is an obvious place, right? You know, you, but you know, South you, South Pond further down is obvious place because it all yeah. flows that way. Yeah, sure. Oh, north, so the north, north Pond. Beach. Beach. What? All right. 
but that's subject to the meeting. We don't want to try and solve it here. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I agree. I agree. So I, I think I think we can come up with something. We can come up with something that isn't um, financially overwhelming, such that I think the select board can be comfortable with saying yes, we're okay. Let's we we will fund that. And and. and 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 the board of health has teeth that can do something. We are not. We're an advisory committee, so yeah. you know we yeah. have to be careful about um, sick on our nose where it doesn't belong. Right. The, the thing we should keep in mind is oh. Whoa, the board wait a of health. The board of health is doing what is legally required. They're legally, we know that. We know that. Yeah, and I and I can imagine them being a little shy about signing up for for doing stuff that's beyond their requirement, you know, without sort of, you know, without something from the select board saying, yes, we want you to do that. Right, right. Understood. But yeah. also people need to be comfortable that are taxpayers on the lake. Yeah, so. no, I, I agree. And my point is, I think we can come up with a protocol. We can help a protocol be, deve be developed that will be useful you know, from, from a perspective of, hey, we can find out where this came from, which would be good to know, uh, and will not be overly, overly financially burdensome. I, I think we can do, I think we can balance this and come up with something that'll be reasonable. And the players, the players that they're looking to have are Lake Management, Board yeah. of Health, CRC, uh, Conservation, yeah. and Select Board. And so, uh, with the board of health meaning the health agent, you know, or if they want one of their board of health members, because the health agent reports to the board of health, just so you understand what the relationship is there. Got it. Okay. Um, so, you know, looking here, uh, who, you know, we can have up to three could attend because otherwise we get into a quorum issue. Uh, so I, I'm very, I'm very happy. I, I want to participate. It's, it's a matter of my schedule's tough. And so it'll make it more challenging. Yeah. Um, you know, and so we should have more than just me from LMC there because there probably will be meetings that I can't go to Yeah. Uh, just by timing. But I, you know, I, I will, you know, I, I'll endeavor to, to help out here. Um, so I, I think I, you know, I would suggest that we pick, you know, two or three people from LMC to participate. Right. So, so I was looking for another volunteer. I, I would plan on being there okay. when I can again. And I think we need one more, at least possibly two more, no more than two more. Yeah, Devin, Mike? Devin, I'd like to go. Yeah. Okay. Mike, Mike Time Dave. out now. Time out. Yeah. I am already a member of this committee as a conservation person. Okay, yeah. that's good. That's good. No, that's good, but that means you've got to limit how many LMC people you can is have. There, is there a well? That would be plus? that's our four. That's our four then. We can have four. No, not we if can you have do. Four. You, that's not. If you a, have Eric. You have Dick. You have Debbie, Deborah, and you Mike. have Mike DeBay, and me. That's five. That's a quorum. Wouldn't well, you work Deb, are you going to be Deb? Are you going to be on there for CRC? Or are you going to be on I there? I can for... represent uh, CRC. No? Yeah. Norm, no? can you? Yes. No, you can't co-represent. Can right. you wear a different hat, Norm? <laughs> wear your con con. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. He, right, he, he, right. He, he's pointing out that there's a there's a meeting law issue here. Right. <laughs> we know. We know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I, how about how about if we have either Eric or myself? And Mike to Bay. So we have an, an or so that one of us, either chair or vice chair, are there. Got it. But, would That's that fine. about that? So like Eric, Eric would be the Eric would be the primary because he's got that background. And I'll back him up if he can't make it. I would think interested citizens could attend that meeting. Absolutely yeah. can. Sure. Yeah. Well, you could go as an interested citizen. And just what's yeah. your opinion? That's all. But if you but if you're a member of LMC, you can't be an interested citizen and right. LMC. No, right, okay. right, right. Yeah, that that's the point Norm's making. So Norm, would would that obviate the issue if Dick and I are either or? I I think it's probably okay as long as you, you both don't show up. Okay. Right, right. <laughs> don't worry. That's true. 
it's, it's, no, it's no different than the select board. If they have two show up, it's still a quorum, you know, so you can't have a meeting when two of the selectmen are present. But if one is there and then the next time another one is there, it's still not a, it's not a okay. quorum. Good. So let's, so let's do that. So then we've got it covered. Dick, I are either or, and uh, Deb and Mike are, are going to be there. I'll be all called time. an alternate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, right. Right. You'll be an alternate and Norm's there. Um, by accident. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's good, and that keeps us keeps us legal. Okay, good catch, Norm. Okay. All right, um, and there's a an article in there just for your interest and edification because I thought it was kind of interesting. The Cape Cod stinky mess, and Deb had sent it to me. I had already. Uh, I get the Cape Cod newspaper and they have a lot of interesting problems with algae blooms really you think we had an al al algae blooms you want to see the color of of their water bodies yeah. and their biggest problem is sewage septic because they have very few sewer plants you know treatment plants they are mostly on septic and high density so this is all getting into all these water bodies and it's the phosphorus and, and nitrogen and, and all that that are coming from uh, old antiquated septic systems. Five gallon drums. Yes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. So anyway, it's just for your reading. Anybody have anything else? We, we didn't talk about the uh, focus groups for LMC rep. Next oh. last item. Yeah, okay. Focus group for LMC. Yeah. Do you want to take that, Norm? No. I'm working. No, no, I mean talk about it. Talk oh, about it. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I'm, Don't want to be working, volunteered. <laughs> I'm working half time for uh, master plan, and I've been doing it since November. So yeah. I'm not interested in taking anything new. Uh, but they're looking for other people that are involved in the town to work on different focus groups. And there's a number of different subjects, and I don't have those at the top of my head, unfortunately. Uh, and and uh, I think two people from CONCOM have signed up. And it's, it's really a one-time event, I believe. It's a couple-hour session. Uh, it'll be a group meeting. So they're just looking for other interested uh, people, people on committees to participate. I went to one a couple of weeks ago, and they right. talked about infrastructure and things like that, and the sewers, yeah. of course, were talked about. So that's why yeah. I was Randy Brown and Tom Fitzgerald, the building guy, yeah. and the two, the two reps from Springfield. But uh, they're small, they're small groups, and it takes about an hour and a half. Do we have anybody would like to volunteer for one? I'll do one. All right. All right. Sucker. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I guess you can show up, right, Norm? Oh, yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So, Norm, you'll let me know when you know when I should show up. <laughs> I'm sure that once your name is submitted, you'll be notified. <laughs> okay. And, and Dad, I'll, try to, I'll try to keep you informed. <laughs> yeah, and if Deb went or and and if you if I'm available, if it just happens, I might opt to attend, but I'm not gonna sign up for it. <laughs> yep. Okay. Too much on the plate. Yep. All right. Do we have anything else? Just want to mention the uh PBJ Marina sale did go through. Yep. There's yep. a new owner. Oh. And a uh on another note, this is a rumor. Rumor I heard the other day is the four dads may have pulled out of that thing. Oh. Mm. What was that, Scotty? Can you, re can you repeat that, Scotty? I you broke up a little. What What was the second thing? I didn't want to say it too loud. Oh, oh well. <laughs> a, a, ru a rumor is the four dads have pulled out of the, the venture of former Krabby Joe's. Ah, okay. Rumor. Thanks. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, because there's not not a lot of work been going on there. By the way, if they plan on opening in the spring, uh, our building inspector, plumbing inspector, electrical inspector, all the other inspectors have seen. In fact, they haven't even taken out permits for for the balance of all the work that has to be done. And he keeps asking them. Not going to happen this year. You know, you, not you, happen. looking at that place, you got six months worth of work to <coughs> to fix but, it. And look at the cost overruns. I mean, it's insane amount of money. So anyway, uh, other than that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn if we're all set. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Eric. And a second. Norm. Norm. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Okay. New Year. Anybody abstain? Nope. All right. We're done yeah. at, at the time is the magic hour is 815. 8.